Crispy is a, is a brand ambassador for Black Rifle Coffee, and I think he is a direct depiction of what the company stands for. It stands for, you know, gritty toughness and living an awesome life and doing what you want to do. He's out there hunting with one leg in the Texas sun to go kill a hog to throw on the barbecue. The guy's nonstop epic. Very seldomly do you find someone that's been through so much in life, but then wakes up every single morning with a positive attitude and mentality and goes, how do I better the people around me? I was a sophomore in high school when 9-11 happened. You know, being in that classroom and, and watching the towers get hit, obviously, like millions of other guys that have joined, it sparked something in me. And I made up my mind as a sophomore that I wanted to join. So when the time came, I enlisted and um, it was just a calling. I was in the Army, I was an infantryman, and then I went on deployment in 2006, May 14th, 2006, you know, that's the day that I got injured and uh, kind of changed everything for me. The loudest IED I've ever heard in my life went off. Vehicle went up about six feet in the air. We found out that it was about 200 and some pounds of explosives that they had actually dug from one of the houses. And as a result of that, I, I sustained 75% burns to the body. Uh, only three of us made it out that day. Omar was burned over the majority of his body and went through years and years of surgery, was given every opportunity to be a victim in life and to say, I'm just gonna coast through this. And he did the absolute opposite. You know, after I got out of San Antonio, out of the hospital in 2010, I. I transition back to Brownsville. I went back there and, and you know, I was with my family. There's not a lot to do in a small town. So I started drinking, I started partying, I started doing this. I was throwing my life away in a sense and I, I realized that and I was like, what am I doing? Like, I got a second chance at life and I'm throwing it away at the bars. Like, this is, no. And I was lucky enough that a friend of mine had opened a gym and uh, I was a strength and conditioning gym. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna go check it out. And I walked in and it was a deadlifting day. And uh, I remember looking at him and I was like, man, I can't do that with my hands, dude. Like, kind of jacked up, bro. And he goes, no, hold on, let's, let's, get, let's get straps. So he strapped me in. The first day that I was in there, I deadlifted at 405. And everybody's like, what the hell? And I was like, is, is that good? I was like, because I can go heavier. And they're like, no, no, that, that's a lot of weight. He's like, I got dudes here that I've been here a year and can't even do that. And I was like, oh, wow. So I put it down and man, that iron bug just bit me. I mean, I know there's powerlifting guys out there. They know exactly what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, I worked out that whole week. The next week I came in and I deadlifted at 500 and everybody's like, what the hell? How? When my legs are all jacked up, when my hands are jacked up, how am I able to do that? And it's just a, uh, it was just something that I kind of developed on my own. I go home and I work on my, on my technique and my form and it just clicked. And uh, the next thing I know, I was inching for something and, and deadlifting this much. And I just got into it at a competitive level. And, you know, next thing I know, I'm in Vegas and I am breaking two world records in the Paralympic world. That was a turning point for me. I realized that, yeah, I, I can do what I set my mind to. And I know that sounds cliche, and everybody's like, oh, you know, shut up. But it really was. I realized that my time and, and service was over with, and I needed to focus on something else, and that was it for me. From there, that's where the whole social media started. People started seeing who I was, what I was doing, and it just, it took off. I 
I definitely think I, I'm blessed to have the platform that I have. At the end of the day, I'm just being me. You know, the stuff that I write, it, it comes from the heart. I've been able to meet kids that have been burned, and that's kind of my passion. You know, when, when I first got introduced to a kid a couple years ago that had been badly burned, like, that was a very, very special moment for me because I could relate to him. Just seeing the smile on him was, was amazing. Somebody shared the story with me online that when I came out on the platform and he got so excited because he said, look at that man, he looks just like me, he's hurt just like me, and he's doing all that weight. He said, I want to do that. So that just kind of made that huge impact in my life, and it was all because of social media. He's got that no-quit mentality where he applies it to everything that he does in his life. You know, when we shoot bows together, he's the first one to be like, shot group's better than yours, Matt. When we lift weights, he's the first one to be like, I can deadlift more than you. And it's just that competitive, never-quit mentality that it just, it's, it's so much fun to be around. If I can give anybody an advice, like overcoming a disability, it kind of be to surround yourself with, with people alike that aren't going to, like, baby you that are gonna push you to be better, that are gonna not look at you at your disability and be like, well, you can't do that. And it's gonna be like, no, yes, you can, and I'm gonna push you so you can get it done.